Jay Hind children. Have you ever seen those disaster movies where an old canoe erupts and engulfs an entire city with its molten clothes? People scramble around to save their lives and the ones that they love. But these things simply do not happen in movies. In fact, it's the movies that are inspired by real life events. Everything can change in just the blink of an eye. Dear children, the instances that I am about to tell you through this session is a testament to what you have seen and it began the very next day after Christmas, that is 26 December 2004, a ray of terror that the world had never seen. Most of the people were asleep at that time. Tsunami hit. Thailand and parts of India such as Antaman and Nicobar Islands and Tamil Nadu coast. And lots of people lost their lives and the properties were also destroyed. Do you know what a tsunami is? Through a video I am going to explain the signs of tsunami. In 409 BC, when Persian soldiers besieged the Greek city of Potidia, the tide retreated much farther than usual, leaving a convenient invasion route. But this wasn't a stroke of luck. Before they had crossed halfway, the water returned in a wave higher than anyone had ever seen, drowning the attackers. The Potidians believed they had been saved by the wrath of Poseidon, but what really saved them was likely the same phenomenon that has destroyed countless others, a tsunami. Although tsunamis are commonly known as tidal waves, they are actually unrelated to the tidal activity caused by the gravitational forces of the sun and the moon. In many ways, tsunamis are just larger versions of regular waves. They have a trough and a crust and consist not of moving water but the movement of energy through water. The difference is in where this energy comes from. 
For normal ocean waves, it comes from wind. Because this only affects the surface, the waves are limited in size and speed. But tsunamis are caused by energy originating underwater from an volcanic eruption, a submarine landslide, or most commonly an earthquake on the ocean floor, caused when the tectonic plates of the Earth's surface slip, releasing a massive amount of energy into the water. This energy travels up to the surface, displacing water and raising it above the normal sea level, but gravity pulls it down normally, which makes the energy ripple outwards horizontally. Thus, the tsunami is born, moving at over 500 miles per hour. When it's far from shore, a tsunami can be barely detectable, since it moves through the entire depth of the water. But when it reaches shallow water, something called wave shallowing occurs, because there is less water to move through. This still massive amount of energy is compressed. The wave's speed slows down, while its height rises to as much as 100 feet. The word tsunami, Japanese for harbor wave, comes from the fact that it only seems to appear near the coast. If the trough of a tsunami reaches shore first, the water will withdraw farther than normal. Before the wave hits, which can be misleadingly dangerous, a tsunami will not only drown people near the coast, but level buildings and trees for a mile inland or more, especially in low-lying areas. As if that weren't enough, the water then retreats, dragging with it the newly created debris and anything or anyone unfortunate enough to be caught in its path. The 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami was one of the dreadliest natural disasters in history, killing over 2 lakh people throughout South Asia. So how we can protect ourselves against the destructive force of nature? People in some areas have attempted to stop tsunamis with sea walls, flood gates and channels to divert the water. But these are not always effective. In 2011, a tsunami surpassed the flood wall, protecting Japanese Fukushima power planet, causing a nuclear disaster in addition to claiming over 18,000 lives. Many scientists and policymakers are instead focusing on early detection, monitoring underwater pressure and seismic activity, and establishing global communication networks for quickly distributing alerts. When nature is too powerful, the safest course is to get out of its way. Well, a tsunami is a very large and powerful wave caused by earthquakes, volcanoes and landslides under the sea. The 2004 tsunami is considered to be the dirtiest ever. It is responsible for taking the lives of more than 150,000 people from many parts of the southern countries. In India, it hit parts of Tamil Nadu and Andaman and Nicobar Islands, taking more than 6,000 people. Today, I am here to share with you some stories of courage and survival. Let us read the chapter part by part and we can discuss the stories. Let's start with the first part of the lesson. Ignatius was the manager of a cooperative society in Kachal. His wife woke him up at 6 a.m. because she felt an earthquake. Ignatius carefully took his television set off its table and put it down on the ground so that it would not fall and break. Then the family rushed out of the house. When the tremors stopped, they saw the sea rising. In the chaos and confusion, two of his children caught hold of the hands of their mother's father and mother's brother and rushed in the opposite direction. He never saw them again. His wife was also swept away. Only the other three children who came with him were saved. These stories are all from Antaman and Nicuba group of islands. The first story is 
start of Ignatius and his family. Ignatius was the manager of a cooperative society in Kachar, which belongs to Nicobar group of islands. When the earthquake started, his wife woke him up at 6 o'clock. All of a sudden, he went and carefully took his television set off from the table and placed it down so that it might not fall and break. Then the family rushed out of the house. When the tremor stopped, they found the sea waves rising. In chaos and confusion, they went into different directions. His two children caught hold of their grandfather and uncle and rushed towards the opposite direction. His wife was also swept away. The other three children who were with him were saved after the tsunami. Let's move on to the second story. Sanchi was a policeman serving in the Kachal island of the Nicobar group of islands. He somehow managed to save himself, his wife and his baby daughter from the waves. But then he heard cries for help from the wife of John, the guest house cook. Sanjeev jumped into the water to rescue her, but they were both swept away. The second story is about Sanjeev and his family. Sanji was a policeman serving in Kachar of the Nicoba group of islands. During tsunami time, he was able to rescue himself, his wife and the baby daughter from the waves. But after that, he heard the cry of the wife of John, the guest house cook. He jumped into the water to rescue her, but the waves took both of them away. Thirteen-year-old Meghna was swept away along with her parents and 77 other people. She spent two days floating in the sea holding on to a wooden door. Eleven times she saw relief helicopters overhead, but they didn't see her. She was brought to the shore by a wave and was found walking on the seashore in a daze. The third story is about a 13-year-old girl named Meghna. She was swept away along with her parents and 77 other people. She spent two days floating on the sea holding on to a wooden door. Eleven times she saw the relief helicopters overhead, but they didn't see her. At last, one of the waves brought her to the shore and she was found walking on the seashore in a confused stage. Almas Javed was 10 years old. She was a student of Carmel Convent in Port Blair where her father had a petrol pump. Her mother Rahila's home was in non Kauri Island. The family had gone there to celebrate Christmas. When the tremors came early in the morning, the family was sleeping. Alma's father saw the seawater recede. He understood that the water would come rushing back with great force. He woke everyone up and tried to rush them to a safer place. As they ran, her grandfather was hit on the head by something and he fell down. Her father rushed to help him. They came. Then came the first giant wave that swept both of them away. Alma's mother and aunt stood clinging to the leaves of a coconut tree, calling out to her. A wave uprooted the tree and they too were washed away. Alma saw a log of wood floating. She climbed on it. Then she fainted. When she woke up, she was in a hospital in Kamota. From there, she was brought to Port Blair. The little girl doesn't want to talk about the incident with anyone. She is still traumatized. The next story is about Almas Javed and her family. She was just 10 years old. She and her family lived in Port Blair, which is the capital of Antonan and Nicobar group of islands. Her father had a petrol pump there. Her mother's house was in Nankovery, which belongs to the Nicobar group of islands. They went to celebrate Christmas to her house. So when the trauma started, the family was sleeping. 
Her father found the sea rigid. Rigid means moving back from its normal place. He was sure or he, he knew that the waves will come back with greater force. And that's why he woke his family up and asked them to rush out of the house. She tried to save them all. But uh, her grandfather was hit with something and he fell down. Her father went to rescue him. Then the first wave came and both of them were swept away. Her mother and aunts stood clinging to the leaves of a coconut tree, calling out to her. At that time, another wave came and uh, uprooted the tree and both of them were swept away. Almas found a log of wood. She climbed on it and then fainted. When she woke up, she found herself in a hospital. From there, she was brought back to Port Blair. She lost everyone. Till now, it is told that she is not ready to talk about that incident. Still, she is traumatized. Traumatized means confused and distressed. Now, let's read the second part. The Smith family from Southeast England were celebrating Christmas at a beach resort in Southern Thailand. Tilly Smith was 10 year old schoolgirl, her sister was 7 years old, their parents were Penny and Colin Smith. It was 26 December 2004, deadly tsunami waves were already on their way. They had been triggered by a massive earthquake off northern Sumatra earlier that morning. The water was swelling and kept coming, Penny Smith remembered. The beach was getting smaller and smaller. I didn't know what was happening. But Tilly Smith sensed that something was wrong. Her mind kept going back to a geography lesson she had taken in England just two weeks before she flew out to Thailand with her family. Tilly saw the sea slowly rise and start to form bubbles and form whirlpools. She remembered that she had seen this in class in a video of a tsunami that had hit the Hawaiian Islands in 1946. Her geography teacher had shown her class the video and told them that tsunami can be caused by earthquakes, volcanoes and landslides. Tilly started to scream at her family to get off the beach. She talked about an earthquake under the sea. She got more and more hysterical, said her mother Penny. I didn't know what a tsunami was, but seeing my daughter so frightened, I thought something serious must be going on. Tilly's parents took her and her sister away from that beach to the swimming pool at the hotel. A number of other tourists also left the beach with them. Then it was as if the NTSC had come out after them. I was screaming, run. The family took refuge in the third floor of a hotel. The building withstood the surge of three tsunami waves. If they had stayed on the beach, they would not have been alive. The Smiths later met other tourists who had lost entire families. Thanks to Tilly and her geography lesson, they had been forewarned. Tilly went back to her school in England and told her classmates her terrifying tale. The story you have seen now is of Tilly Smith and her family. They came from England to Thailand to celebrate Christmas. While they were celebrating Christmas on the beach, all of a sudden they found that the sea waves were becoming larger and larger and the beach was getting smaller and smaller. Tilly Smith uh, thought that or she understood that something wrong was going to happen. She remembered her geography class wherein she had learned about tsunami. Her geography teacher has taught her that tsunami is caused by earthquakes, volcanoes and landslides. When she found that the sea was getting froth, bubbles and then a whirlpool, she recognized that it was tsunami and she became very hysterical and started screaming and asked everyone to escape from the place. Her parents took her and her sister to the swimming pool of the hotel. A large number of tourists also followed them. When they were in the swimming pool, they found that a huge wave was approaching them. 
Then they ran away from the place and then take refuge in the third floor of the hotel. The building was strong enough to withstand three attacks of large waves. Because of the geography lesson that she has learned, she and her family and some other tourists escaped from tsunami. Later, when she went back to England, she talked about the terrifying tale to her friends. The Smith family also visited the other visitors who lost their family also. Now let's read the third part of the lesson. Before the giant waves slammed into the coast in India and Sri Lanka, wild and domestic animals seemed to know what was about to happen. They fled to safety. According to eyewitness accounts, elephants screamed and ran for higher ground. Dogs refused to go outdoors. Flamingos abandoned their low-lying breeding areas and zoo animals rushed into their shelters and could not be enticed to come back out. Many people believe that animals possess a sixth sense and know when the earth is going to shake. Some experts believe that animals' more acute hearing helps them to hear or feel the earth's vibration. They can sense an approaching disaster long before humans realize what's going on. We cannot be sure whether animals have a sixth sense or not. But the fact is that the giant waves that rolled through the Indian Ocean killed more than 1,50,000 people in a dozen countries. But not many animals have been reported dead. People say that it is the animals who are first to sense any forthcoming dangers. So did they sense that a tsunami was coming? Some stories suggest that they did. Before the giant waves attacked the Indian Ocean and Sri Lanka, wild and domestic animals seemed to know about it earlier. They went to their shelters. According to eyewitness, elephants screamed and then they went to higher grounds. The dogs refused to go outdoors. The flamingos abandoned, abandoned means deserted their low-lying breeding areas. And the zoo animals went inside their uh, cages and they refused to come out although the people attracted them with many things. Some people say that animals have got sixth sense and that's why they are able to understand whether an earthquake occurs or not. Some people say that animals uh, hearing power, that sense, that hearing sense helps them to feel or hear the vibration of the earth and that's why they understand or they come to know about it earlier than human beings identify what, is go what was going to happen. Okay? Now, it is not sure whether animals have a sixth sense or not. But according to the census, it is clear that the tsunami that hit Indian Ocean has killed more than 1,50,000 people, but less number of animals were killed. Along India's Kudalur coast, where thousands of people perished, buffaloes, gods and dogs were found unharmed. The Yala National Park in Sri Lanka is a home to a variety of animals including elephants, leopards and 130 species of birds. 60 visitors were washed away from the Patanangala beach inside the park. But no animal carcasses were found except for two water buffaloes. About an hour before the tsunami hit, people at Yala National Park had observed three elephants running away from the Patanangala beach. A Sri Lankan gentleman who lives on the coast near Gale said his two dogs would not go for their daily run on the beach. They are usually excited to go on this outing, he said. But on that day, they refused to go and most probably saved his life. Hello, India's Kutulur coast where thousands of people perished. Perished means died. The animals like dogs, gods, and other animals were found unharmed. The Yala National Park in Sri Lanka is a home for variety of animals like elephants, leopards and 130 species of birds. 
60 visitors were washed away from the Pachanangala beach inside the park wherein no animal carcasses were found. Carcasses means dead bodies. Except two water buffaloes. People say that they have uh, observed three elephants running away from the Pachanangala beach before that incident. A Sri Lankan gentleman who lives in the coast of Galley said that his dogs refused to go out on that day. Normally they were very excited to go for their daily walk on the beach. But that day they were not ready to go out. That helped to save his life also. From all the instances that we have discussed, we can realize that only when we are in the middle of a calamity, we can identify the importance of our life. We are living in this world and there are so many factors that affect our life also. We have food to eat, we have water to drink, we have oxygen to breathe in and we have a place to live. If any one of these things go missing, then we won't be able to survive. One more thing children, when the earthquakes or floods occurs, lots of people will lose their lives and some are affected with severe injuries. Anyhow, those who are present during that calamity or during that incident will be somehow affected with some problems. You have seen that in some stories, some, some children were distressed, isn't it? So, you have to learn to respect and value your life. Dear children, on this note, I shall take leave. Definitely, we will meet with another lesson the next week.